So one crucial mistake that I see people make when they're trying to help other people, they, they, other than that they go into advising, they really fail to pay attention to their language. Um, some people sometimes say uh, uh, energy goes where attention flows. And that's so true. So that needs to reflect in your language. So what a lot of people want to do when they help other people, they, they, they go into a mode of being pretend psychologists or psychiatrists. And they go, well, what's wrong with you? And let me know more about the problem. Tell me how it's bad and how does anxiety work and what's your frustration like and your trauma this and your trauma that. Well, first of all, you're not trained for that. You're not trained to medicate. You're not trained to treat. So what can you do? Well, that's stepping into the place of coach, not advisor, unless you know a lot about the topic, which I personally find when you're working with your peers, um, when you're working with someone older, they not know what you're talking about. So how can you then step away from advising, consulting, giving therapy, is to actually let people focus on what they want, right? And what, what do we want? Well, we want to have a future where we reach our goals. We also want to be loved. We also want to connect to others. We also want uh, to be safe and have security and things like that. That's all things that we want. And when someone is miserable or experiencing a problem, that's what they don't want, okay? So what's one thing that you should do is pay attention to where you direct a conversation. Are you directing it to what someone wants rather than what someone doesn't want? Now, your language needs to reflect that. So your language or your questions need to reflect that. What is it that you want? Who do you want to become? What would you like to have instead? Those those types of questions. But also, in your own choice of words, you need to use the word solution more than the word problem. You need to use the word resilience more than the word tough. You need to use the words like overcoming, gratitude, love, confidence. You need to use positive words. And that is how you direct the brain away from the negative and towards the positive. Now, of course, there's a time and a place for everything. When someone is experiencing an extreme emotion like anger or sadness or fear, maybe not the right time to be all Pollyanna and positive thinker. But it is a good thing that when you sit down on day-to-day stuff with a friend or with a client, that you maybe write down 10 words that you want to use more frequently, 10 positive words. And you may want to write down 10 questions that you could ask a person that directs the brain towards the positive. That's what I also teach for a living, but I'm not, I don't want to go into what, wor- what sentences and what words those would be, but I think you should try to w- use your words for now, until you train with me, I guess. Instead, it's like, you know what, you, where do you allow the attention of people to go? So write down 10 words, write down five to 10 questions you could be asking people instead of stepping on the psychotherapist's seat. Um, anyway, just wanted to say hi from Mexico. That's a little bit the tidbit for me. Uh, April, we're holding a training here in Mexico. So join us uh, at the beach and I'll see you soon. Bye.